guys, shooting for fun here. Hey, uh, gonna be showing you today uh, one of probably the most controversial guns on the market today, and if you guessed it, it's the High Point C9 Compact 9mm pistol. Now, before we start, I don't want to harp too long on this guy here, but um, a lot of people, you know, that, like I said, it's controversial because they either love it or they hate it. Okay? But you have to keep in context about what this gun is. Okay? This is a $150 gun. Okay? Now, you can't expect to go out and buy some, uh, let's say, a Kia off the production floor there, you know, and uh, expect it to have the same... You know, twenty thousand dollar car, and expect it to have the same, you know, quality and performance as a, you know, like a Lamborghini or Ferrari. You know, you're talking about a four hundred thousand dollar sports car. Right? Uh, so the, there's really no comparison. That's what a lot of people do. They compare this gun to the Glocks and the Sigs and the HKs and stuff, and it's not in that same realm. Those are four, five, six hundred dollar guns, seven hundred dollar guns. This guy is a hundred and fifty dollar gun okay this gun is designed to where pretty much anybody that wants a gun for either uh, concealed carry or just basic home defense or for just basic shooting you know um, can afford this gun and that's why it is one of the most popular selling guns on the market today okay um, and most people that do complain about it, they complain about the aesthetics of it. Oh, it's ugly, it's bulky, it's heavy. But they normally don't complain about how it shoots. Okay, I've researched this gun quite a bit, and uh, on uh, reviews and uh, forums and YouTube videos, things like that, and nobody normally can planes about how it shoots because it does shoot it's reliable and it's pretty accurate okay. um, like I said everybody depicts it about how it looks not how it performs um, and if you do want to you know save up the money you know and buy one of the you know the more expensive you know type of guns you know I highly recommend that Glocks are good Smiths are good, Tours are good, HKs, you know, SIGs, all those are really great guns. Um, if you have the money to spend. If you don't, you know, the high point is something you might want to look at. Okay. Um, there are some good things, really good things about it. There are some bad things about it. But then again, you know, you're dealing with a $150 gun, not a six, $700 gun. Okay. And we're going to show you how we take this thing apart. First thing is, we want to make sure our mag is out, make sure our chamber is clear, right? We're unloaded, we're safe. Okay. Now, this, it comes with an eight round magazine, okay? But, the wonderful thing about this is if you have the high point 995, the 9 millimeter carbine, it will take those mags as well, okay? The only difference is, it's a little longer, it's going to stick out a little bit farther. But if anybody's had the uh, the 33 round mags in your Glocks, you'll know that that thing sticks out way past here, so it doesn't really matter. You get the extra shots. Um, now they do make a 10 round magazine in this, um, and it has the extra little boot on there to take up the, the space there so that you get your full grip and everything. Um, and they're about the same price. These magazines are around $20. Um, reason why I have this is I do have the High Point 995. And uh, for one of the more cheaper guns that I have, it is the most accurate gun I have. Okay. And I like that because if you want to take your your pistol and your, your rifle out to the range or out to shoot, out in the woods to shoot, you don't have to carry different magazines. They all carry this, you know, you can use it, interchange the same magazines, which is a nice option. Okay. So, 
what we want to do is we want to get started cleaning this thing. Now the takedown is one of the probably the worst there. You know, it doesn't have the little takedown things like you just slide the thing off like the Glocks or you know, your Smith & Wesson and things like that. It does have a pin that you have to take out. Okay, now this pin is located right back here. So you have to slide this slide back. It's a little hard to get to. You have to lock your slide in place and the cut on there is a little bit off so it's a little bit off center but there I don't know if you can see that here we'll try to get up a little closer there if you can see that little row pin so that row pin has to come out so what we're going to do is we're just going to take our little block here and we're going to line that up And we want to get our roll punch here. As you can see, our roll pin comes out pretty easy. Okay. Now, once you get that roll pin out, you can release your slide. Now, this little piece back in the back this is what keeps your slide in place it, it also um, it's what when you slide that firing pin spring is right in behind that so what you have to do is you have to pull back a little bit you lift up on that to pull it out of the slide and your slide will come off and here's our little uh, and then this little piece will just slide out And then with that, you can take your firing pin spring and your firing pin out. Okay. And there you have your basic slide there. You could also, if you wanted to knock this little row pin out right here, you can see that. You can knock that pin out right there and that would take your extractor out. Okay. Now this slide is pretty heavy. Okay. Now could high point, you know, make this, this is kind of a uh, composite, kind of a steel, alloy steel there. Um, could they make a better grade steel slide and mill it all down and contour it to make it look nice and make it weigh a little less and that? Sure they could. But then it wouldn't be a hundred fifty dollar gun, right? you know. They could remanufacture the slide there. They could put you know better trigger grouping in there, polish the internals, and do all that stuff. But then you're not talking about a hundred dollar, hundred fifty dollar gun. You're talking you know three, four, five hundred dollar gun again. Okay. Granted, keep in mind that this is made for the average person. Anybody can basically afford these. So you got your frame, I mean your slide taken apart. We got our frame here, and here's our recoil spring. Now the one thing that I don't like about the high points is they make the polymer or the plastic recoil spring guide rod. And uh, that I don't particularly like. Um, they do sell for about 15 bucks. You can buy the stainless steel one that goes in there. I did that also for my high point 995 as well. Okay. And then you have basically your end barrel here, your stock. Now it is a fixed barrel. There's a couple of uh, pins here and here that you could take out to remove that, and that barrel would come out of there. Um, there is a couple of modifications that people do. They polish that slide, you know, your feed ramp. Um, your little uh, shear pin here they they grease that and that you know it helps the, the feeding of it and where uh, you can polish your uh, trigger piece here um, you know there's things where you can enhance the the performance of this guy a little bit okay? um, they say if you grease this take this out and grease this uh, shear um, it will also aid in your triggering 
add a little bit less trigger pull to it, make it a little easier. Um, I shot it, and it, it really it wasn't that bad. Okay? Um, very little reset on it. Um, you know, these are, because of the fixed barrel, it is a, a fairly accurate gun. Okay? You can dial these guys in and do some pretty good accuracy with them. Okay? So let's go on with our cleaning here. What I do is I'll just uh, take my old cleaning rag here and we'll just spray some uh, lube. And this is our uh, Remington Rim Oil. That's what we use quite a bit there. It's a good product. And we're going to run our little snake pour here through there. The end of that gets a little frayed out. It's a little tougher to pull there, but it gets a good clean on it there. We'll run it through again. I took this to the range the other day for the first time, and I put about four magazines through it, and it, it ran flawless. I mean, not a hiccup, not a misfeed, uh, no failure to ejects. You know, it, it just ran perfect, okay? And then we'll take our slide and we'll wipe it out really good and stuff. And I do this to get rid of some of the the gunshot residue and things like that. Okay. And you want to be, you know, wipe off your springs. And now this one has a little extra capture spring there. Um, some of the older model guns, the earlier models of these, had like a little steel barrel. It wasn't an actual spring. It was just a little barrel looking. These. And we'll wipe off our firing pin and our little bolt there. Okay, so now what I do is I'll just take some of the uh, liquid rim oil and I take a Q tip. And uh, I just run it up into the slide. Now you can see the pieces of the slide where it wears and stuff. That's where it rides on the rails. That's what you want to really grease up good. Um, I grease up the, the front where the firing pin comes through. Your extractor. And if you notice, you know, it gets pretty dirty. That's why I normally clean mine after every shoot. I'm a little angle about that. Some people don't clean the gun the whole entire time they have it, you know. But I think, you know, a clean gun is just going to function better. I'll run that up into the... Right there, and then you want to grease the... Uh, inside of the slide there where it rides. And like I said, this is not a really heavy oiling here. This is just a light little lubrication on it. And you can see it does get pretty dirty. Okay. And then we'll do the frame here. What I do is I grease that ramp really good there. Put There's a little, uh, if you can hear it, kind of rattle there. This has a, uh, a counterweight to it. The trigger has to do with, uh, you know, helping protect it if it's dropped. Raise that shear up there good. And like I said, it just kind of grease up around where your slide is going to ride there. Okay. Now this guy goes back the same way you put it in, or you took it out. It goes back the same way. Okay. Your uh, um, 
recoil spring goes in with the plastic piece out. And what I typically do is I'll just put a little, it's just a light lube. This is a, uh, uh, it has a silicone base in there so it does dry a dry lube there. We'll put our firing pin back in. Put a little lube in our springs here. We'll put our firing pin back in. Okay. Make sure we got that in there good. And then a little pin here goes in, doesn't matter which way it goes, it just kind of slides up in there, right? Hold that spring. Now when you put this back on, you kind of got to watch. Um, you got a little base piece here where your recoil spring sits, and it is at a slant, so you do kind of got to watch when you set that in there. So you got to watch that, that this doesn't slide out, just like I did. Okay, let me grab that here. Well, like I said, it takes down pretty easy, you know, it's got basically the same similar components and things. Um, Spring back in there again, and like I said, you do kind of gotta watch that. Spring as it goes back in. There we go. Now, you want to make sure that you get that pin. You have to rise it up, pull it down a little bit. There you go. And you make sure that that pin fits down into that hole inside the block. Okay? And then you slide your slide back. You put your roll pin back in there. And you're good to go. Okay? Now that's our basic uh, takedown and cleaning of our high point. Um... Like I said, the one thing that I don't like is the roll pin feature because I don't like having to hammer something out because you need, you know, you need a punch, uh, you need your hammer, you need, um, you don't have to buy one of these blocks here, but it is pretty handy and they're about $15, $12, $15 there, so they're not really ex that expensive. Um, you could use a roll of duct tape or anything that you could just raise this up on and, and hammer that piece out. Um, other than the actual takedown thing, because like I said, I do like to clean my guns every time I shoot. That's just me. Um, if you don't normally take down yours that often for cleaning, if you do it every fifth time or every tenth time or whatever, you depend upon how often you shoot, um, you know, it's not that big of a deal. You know, it's just one little pin that you have to take out. Um, and it is, like I said, for the money, 150 bucks. You just can't go wrong with these guys. They make them in a 380. Um, they got the 9 mil. Uh, don't quote me, but I believe they have the 40 cal, and they have the 45 caliber, which is a, a popular brand. A lot of people like the 45 caliber because, you know, to get that big bang bullet there at you know, around two hundred dollars, you can't, you know, you can't beat that. You know, so, so the, the forty-five and the nine are really popular versions, and they're good guns. They're reliable. I mean, they shoot. One guy had on a post there for his. It said he said it goes bang. You know, and, and that's what you want a gun to do. I mean, that's what its purpose is. You know, I've never had anybody complain about how they shoot. They complain about how they look. You know, they're heavy, things like that. And it is about 32 ounces. Um, 
And the one thing is, 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 is it is a little top heavy. You know, you put the ammo in there and it kind of bounces out a little bit. Um, I actually bought some grips, some rubberized grips, like the toweling type grips to, to put on here just to add a little better texture, a little better gripping. Um, they do make different handles for these. You can get them in different colors and styles and stuff. Um, a lot of people polish the, uh, the side piece here. And here, like it's done on the uh, 380s, they polish that to give it a little more aesthetics, you know. Um, you can also have it. They make this gun in a uh, a camo, and I forget what the other color is. It's kind of all different colored. And, uh, you know, you can get these things Cerakoted and things like that, but the, the chance of uh, the process of that is probably more expensive than what you would pay for the gun, you know, to get it Cerakoted. But, um, unless you know somebody or something like that. But, I mean, it, for the money, I mean, you just can't go wrong with this guy. I mean, it shoots, and it's pretty accurate. Um, you know, it just, it's just a, a $150, $200 gun, and, and that's what it is, you know. Um, a lot of people don't like it because of the, the aesthetics, but, you know, you pretty much get what you pay for, you know. This is a really good gun. Yes, it is a little heavy. It's a little bulky. Um, it's about the same width, pretty much, as the Glocks or the uh, Berettas. You know, it is a full-size uh, feature to it. Um, you know, it's a little thick here, but, but I mean, it's a it's it's just a, a really good shooting little gun for the money. All right, guys, that's our uh, high point C9. And uh, I'm shooting for fun. Thanks for watching.